What's up guys, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog. And today I'm gonna to tell you what every product in the Red Sea Reef Care program does. Now this is not a sponsored video, Red Sea aren't paying me to make this, and it's not even really a recommendation as such. But when you first start in the hobby, the reef care program can be quite complicated, so I wanted to explain what everything does and let you know whether or not you need it. Now if this is your first time at the channel and you want weekly reefing goodness, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Right, let's get stuck in. Red Sea splits this stuff into four different recipes, depending on what corals you want to keep. But all of the recipe types use the exact same products, with the exception of fish only, which I'm not interested in for the purposes of this video. The only difference between the recipes is the levels of each product Red Sea suggests you aim for. There are four groups of products in the Red Sea Reef Care program, starting with major elements. Now, Major Element is the only essential product line on this list. Your corals can do just fine without any of the others, but they must have Major Elements. They are the eggs and flour in this cake recipe, if you will. The Major Elements are Calcium, Alkalinity, aka KH or DKH, and Magnesium. Now, the chemistry behind how those work gets very complicated, and if you want to get your geek on and understand the nitty gritty, head on over to the Bulk Reef Supply YouTube channel, where they will explain all of that far better than I can. But all you really need to know is that calcium, alkalinity and magnesium are the main elements corals need to grow their skeletons. So if you started keeping corals, you'll need to start adding these three major elements sooner rather than later. That applies less so to soft corals and mainly to hard corals, i.e. LPS or SPS. Now I've done a simple guide to dosing these major elements, which I'll link at the top of the screen. But in short, the only way to know for sure if you need to start dosing the major elements is to test each of them and see if they're depleting. Just test all three at the same time of day, every day for a week. If the levels are lower at the end of the week than they were at the start, your corals are using up major elements, so you need to start adding them back into your tank. How much you need to add will of course depend on how much your corals are using, so there will be a bit of trial and error at first while you dose small amounts, test again and increase your dose until you reach your desired levels, all of which will probably take a good few weeks to get stable. Next up we have trace and minor elements, which is the first of the non-essential products. Now if you're just starting up with your first corals or still getting used to keeping your major elements stable, my view is that you're better off leaving trace elements alone until you've mastered the basics of major elements. Trace elements are just the cherry on top of the icing on the cake. Your corals will be just fine without trace elements and will show much better health and growth if you get your major elements stable, your lighting and flow right, and your nitrate and phosphate in a good range. And if something starts going wrong in your tank, trace elements just adds another thing to consider when trying to solve the puzzle to fix your issues. With that being said, once you've nailed the basics and got your tank nice and stable, the idea of Red Sea Minor and Trace Elements is that they will improve your corals' colours, which is why they call this their Coral Colour Program. So if your corals are looking a little faded or not showing their best colours, it might be because your trace element levels are too low. And the beauty of Red Sea's Coral Colour Program is that it's pretty easy to get your head round. To work out how much of the trace elements you need to dose, you just need to work out how much calcium your tank is using, which you can do with a bit of home testing. Red Sea says you'll need to add one milliliter of each of the four trace element bottles for every 10 milliliters of Red Sea calcium solution you use. While that's the theory, it's always a good idea to test the levels of anything you're adding to your tank. Now trace element test kits don't have a great reputation for accuracy, so you could end up overdosing without knowing about it. I personally rely on ICP tests to establish my trace element levels. An ICP test costs around £30 and involves sending off a small sample of your water for analysis by science nerds in a lab. And my view is that you're better off doing that once every two or three months than you are relying on home test kits. But I can't honestly say how accurate trace element test kits are, so I'm not necessarily saying you should rule them out. In theory at least, if you're adding Red Sea trace elements in proportion to the amount of calcium your tank uses, you should be okay. But for the sake of £30 every couple of months, it's worth doing ICP tests, particularly when you first start adding trace elements. The next product in Red Sea's Reef Care program is Nopox, or NO3PO4X to use its proper name. NO3 is nitrate, PO4 is phosphate, and the X means it gets rid of the stuff. In short, nitrates and phosphates are nutrients that need to be present in the correct levels in your tank to allow your corals to thrive and to keep nuisance algae at bay. So Nopox is the preservative in our cake recipe to keep things nice and fresh. If your nutrient levels are too low, your corals will starve but if they're too high, your corals will lose colour and may even start to die. And the excess nutrients the corals can't use will be gobbled up by algae, which can then take over your tank and look ugly. 
The reality is that in your first tank, nutrient levels are more likely to be too high than too low. So adding Nopox in that situation is a good thing. But the reason I say Nopox isn't essential is that it's just one of many ways to control nutrients in a reef tank. For me, a good skimmer and Roafos tumbling in a reactor are the best ways to control your nitrate and phosphate. But Nopox has a big fan base and it's based on the established principle of carbon dosing, which is proven to reduce nitrates and phosphates, so it's certainly worth considering. Adding Nopox to your tank effectively feeds certain types of bacteria, which in turn reduce your nitrate and phosphate levels. Now you may have heard of achieving the same thing by adding vodka vinegar or sugar to your aquarium. Now the intricacies of the differences between vodka, sugar, vinegar and Nopox are beyond the scope of this video. But for me, the main reasons to use Nopox over the other methods are that it's been formulated specifically for the purpose of use in a reef tank and it comes with instructions telling you exactly how much to use. Now in the interest of thoroughly researching this video, I drank a lot of vodka. None of it came with instructions on how much to add to my fish tank and my missus got mad at me for throwing up in the kitchen sink. Deciding on whether or not you need to use Nopox is easy. You should really be testing your nitrate and phosphate levels every week. If they're too high, you need to do something to reduce them and Nopox is one way of achieving that. And the last product in the Red Sea Reef Care program is Reef Energy AB+, and this is simply a coral food. Now I don't consider it to be essential because almost all corals are of course photosynthetic and so eat, for want of a better word, light. So this is the equivalent of adding a little bit more yeast in our cake to make it slightly bigger. You will see coral farms like Tidal Gardens feeding their corals, but their business depends on growing corals as fast as possible, which isn't necessarily the aim of the game in your own personal reef tank. Most hobbyists will value stable parameters and good colours over squeezing out every last drop of growth. And I've recently stopped adding Reef Energy to my tank because my corals are actually growing too quick for my liking. And Reef Energy is another product that I would say you probably shouldn't start using until you've mastered all the other bits I've talked about in this video. With that being said, there doesn't seem to be much doubt that Reef Energy will make your corals grow a little faster. So if that's your goal, there's probably not much harm in giving it a try. As far as I can tell, it's quite difficult to overdose Reef Energy to the point that it will cause problems in your tank. So as long as you follow the instructions carefully and start out slowly, you should be fine. And if you run into problems, you can just stop dosing the stuff. Now I've done a separate video diving a little deeper into Reef Energy AB+, which I'll link at the top of the screen. And I'm planning on doing a long-term update soon, so look out for that one. So in summary then, the major elements are the foundations on which your corals are built and are absolutely essential for them to survive and grow. The minor and trace elements are for colour improvement and will make your corals look that little bit better. The Nopox is a form of algae management to keep your nutrients in check. And the Reef Energy AB Plus is a coral food to squeeze out that little bit of extra growth. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week. And until next time, happy reefing.